Good evening. Welcome to the Church of the Ascension on this, the fourth Sunday of Advent. My name is Bridget Passour. Our celebrant for this evening is our pastor, Father Daniel, assisted by Deacon Gary. The Mass intentions for this evening's liturgy are Frank Angelo and Horace Hody Blood. This Mass is being live streamed. We are united today both with our online family and with those here present. And for those of you who are here present, please check your cell phones to make sure that they are in the silent position. Please take home a copy of the bulletin or visit the website regarding the many details of the events happening here at Ascension. Here are just a few events that are happening here this week. Ascension's Advent Reconciliation Service is Monday, December 20th at 7 p.m. There will be 10 priests hearing confessions. Please note, Saturday morning confessions will not be offered again until Saturday, January 8th. Christmas Eve Masses are at 5 p.m., 7 p.m., and 9 p.m., and the Christmas Day Mass is at 10 a.m. There will be two Masses offered at 5 p.m., one here in the sanctuary and one in the ACC. The doors will open at 4 p.m. Mass will not be offered at 9.15 a.m. on Christmas Eve or at 5.30 p.m. on Christmas Day. Parish offices in the food pantry will be closed beginning Friday, December 24th, and will reopen Monday, January 3rd. Join us this Sunday, December 19th, in the ACC from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. for food sorting as we pack Christmas meals for 100 families. Food and gift distribution will begin around 1 p.m., all are welcome to help with this outreach. Available this evening for purchase in the Commons is our 50th anniversary uh, Christmas tree ornament. The cost is $15. Please remain seated as we recite the prayer to the Holy Spirit. We stand before you, Holy Spirit, as we gather in your name. With you alone to guide us, make yourself at home in our hearts. Teach us the way we must go and how we must do. We are weak and sinful. Do not let us promote disorder. Do not let ignorance lead us down the wrong path or partiality influence our actions. Let us find in you our unity so that we may journey together to eternal life and not stray from the way of truth and what is right. All this we ask of you who are at work in every place and time, in the communion of the Father and the Son, forever and ever. Amen. On this fourth weekend of Advent, we remember the gift of peace that we have in Christ. As we light this candle, it is meant to remind us of the peace that Christ brought into the world and that we will celebrate very shortly. Jesus, the Prince of Peace, brings light and love through God's perfect love. Jesus is God in human form. St. John tells us, God so loved the world that he gave us his only son. So whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Would you please rise? Oh. 
the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Today we celebrate the fourth Sunday of Advent, something which is very powerful that today we have lit the fourth candle, the candle of peace. What does it mean to us that our preparation for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ is now come to an end. Let us be thankful for the gift of this time of Advent. It was really the time for all of us, the time for prayer, the time for love, and the time for peace, but also the time for reconciliation. Let us continue to prepare on Monday for the sacrament of reconciliation to be really the time for all of us to be served with those 10 priests. Coming together as God's family, let us acknowledge our sins and ask for God's love and mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us and forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ, your Son, was made known by the message of, our, of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Micah. Thus says the Lord, you Bethlehem Ephrathah, too small to be among the clans of Judah. From you shall come forth for me one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient times. Therefore, the Lord will give them up until the time when she who is to give birth has born, and the rest of his kindred shall return to the children of Israel. He shall stand firm and shepherd his flock by the strength of the Lord, in the majestic name of the Lord, his God. And they shall remain, for now his greatness shall reach the ends of the earth. He shall be peace. The word of the Lord. Make us turn to you. Let us see your face, and we shall be saved. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face, and we shall be saved. 
O shepherd of Israel, hearken from your throne, and the cherubim shine forth. Rouse your power, and come and save us. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face, and we shall be saved. Once again, O Lord of hosts, look down from heaven and see. Take care of this vine, and protect what your right hand has planted, the Son of Man whom you yourself made strong. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face, and we shall be saved. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, when Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you prepared for me. In holocaust and sin offerings, you took no delight. Then I said, as is written of me in the scroll, behold, I come to do your will, O God. First, he says, sacrifices and offerings, holocausts and sin offerings, you neither desired nor delighted in. These are offered according to the law. Then he says, behold, I come to do your will. He takes away the first to establish the second. By this will, we have been consecrated through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. The word of the Lord. the Lord is near. Alleluia, alleluia, hurry the Lord is near. Alleluia, hurry the Lord is near. Alleluia, alleluia, hurry the Lord is near. I am the handmaiden of Done to me, holy Lord. Mary the Lord is here. Alleluia. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Mary set out and traveled to the hill country in haste to a town of Judah, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the infant leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, cried out in a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how does this happen to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For at the moment the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the infant in my womb leapt for joy. Blessed are you who believe that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. There's a tendency for preachers to stress how our society seems to be losing sight of Christ in Christmas, along with deploring its commercialization. The criticism is justified, but today I want to stress the presence of Christ in Christmas and maybe help you to find 
it in, in it. Our celebration of Christmas has many layers. In an article in the tablet, which is an international Catholic weekly news review published in London, in a 1998 column by Anthony Philpot, he identifies some of Christmas's layers. For Philpot, the most superficial layer is the consumer Christmas from which there is no escaping. The insistent Christmas carols, reindeers and Santa Claus, and the aggressive merchandising of all kinds of goods with the intent of encouraging overspending. It promotes a Christmas with a hollow core. The second layer he classifies as the Charles Dickens layer. Cards depicting snowy scenes, roaring fires, turkey, ham, plum pudding, various pies. It's a Christmas of the family get together, of goodwill to all, of, of philanthropy and expansiveness. These values have a lot to be said for them, but in the absence of faith, it amounts to little. A passing sense of goodwill, maybe a few pious phrases, a few sincere gifts given or received, but then everything goes back to the way it was before. The third level is the crib, which depicts, which depicts for us more of what Christmas is about. This is a layer of the school nativity play, which reenacts the Christmas story, and which for all its, all its simplicity can be moving. The fourth is the deepest layer. It's a spiritual one. It's a story of how in Israel 2,000 years ago, a baby was born. In the person of this baby, God's son took our nature upon himself and entered our world in weakness and in love. He came to remind us that we are God's children and have an eternal destiny. Many of the more righteous among us have a tendency to dismiss or even condemn the first three layers and to see the spiritual layer as the only true one. It's based on the supposition that the spiritual and the material are opposed to one another, but this isn't true. Christianity includes matter and spirit. There can be no such thing as a purely spiritual Christmas. Our mission is to find a connection between the secular and the spiritual content of the feast. Much of the buying and selling that occurs at Christmas fosters gift giving, good works, joy, and the affirmation of family ties, resulting in giving and receiving. This notion goes back to when December 25th was first designated as a day to commemorate Christ's birth. The year was 336, and it was Emperor Constantine that signed the proclamation. It gave a Christian meaning to what was already a Roman feast day, Saturnaria, the celebration of the winter solstice. We need to see the close relationship between the spiritual and the material between the heavenly and the earthly things, while at the same time being aware of the over-commercialization of Christmas. We have to figure out how to integrate the two, and this is always a core religious problem. How do we reconcile spirituality and materiality, flesh and spirit, the inward and the outward, and the surface and the substance? There are those who insist on a clear division between the divine and human, the sacred and the secular, and the soul and the body. But we seldom find such clear-cut events in our lives, and that's certainly true for Christmas. Christmas with its many layers, which are so interwoven with each other that they often seem to be one and the same. One thing Christmas often brings out in us is our sentimentality. Often this is something we are embarrassed about, but it's this vulnerability that most clearly shows our humanity, which we often try to hide the rest of the year. If around Christmas time we feel the impulse to be forgiving, charitable, and loving, we shouldn't think twice about what we should do. It's an opportunity to act more humanely than we might otherwise do. It's been said, the milk of human kindness doesn't come from cows or goats, but from the great repository of compassion and hope, it comes from the human heart. 
It's that sense of generosity that Christmas can bring out in each of us. Some have tried to extinguish the spirit of Christmas. The likes of Stalin, Hitler, Marx, and others have tried to suppress Christmas, but Christmas has survived. Christmas endures despite all our inhumanity towards one another, all of our greed, and all the violence that has tried to reduce its message. Christmas is a time of opportunity. It creates a climate which encourages us to reveal our better natures. It seems it's not impossible. It seems it's impossible for us to act charitable and compassionate all year long. So at least on Christmas, we can collectively act that way. How bleak the world would be if there were no Christmas. There is nothing else but the power to move a person's heart to its utmost capacity. And Advent is the time to prepare for, it, for ourselves for this transformative event. Christmas is a feast of the heart. It reveals to us what the heart of God is really like. It was God who gave, his, gave us the gift of his son. At the same time, Christmas reveals to us what the human heart is capable of. Christmas causes us to open our hearts and to the extent to which we open our hearts and to, the, to one and another will be the extent to which we experience the great joy the angels announce to the shepherds. Here's praying that you have prepared for Christmas. Amen. Amen. Please rise and profess of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Apostle Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord in the gift of life, who proceed from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sin, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and of the world to come. Amen. O oh God, you call us to turn to you with confidence. We bring our prayers to you now. For our brothers and sisters in the Midwest and South, impacted by the devastation from the tornadoes, for those who were injured, for the lives that were lost, and for all in their communities grieving, may they, are, may they find well-being, peace, and hope in God's never-ending love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for our holy Catholic and apostolic church, that we might be placed, that we might be a place that embraces all and helps to nurture the Holy Trinity through our actions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faith community, that we might prepare our hearts and our homes to be a place to welcome Christ this Christmas with peace in our hearts and minds. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For parents and all who desire to be parents yet unable, that they may reflect God's tenderness and love to know his will. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are sick, that they may know the compassion and healing of Christ, the Holy Comforter, especially Mac McNamara and Lisa Kelman. For those names of the chronically ill listed in our bulletin, and for those names we mention aloud now, 
We pray to the Lord. For all who have died, may they rest in eternal peace. And for our deceased weekend mass intentions, Frank Angelo, Horace Blood, Galileo Gonzalez, Michael Yadinak, and Carolyn Ficken. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Please join in reciting the anniversary prayer. Heavenly Father, we praise and thank you for the past 50 years. Your grace and spirit have enabled our parish to proclaim the word, celebrate the Eucharist, and save our local community. In thanksgiving, we pray for all those parishioners who set the parish foundation and all for those who, throughout the years, have joined us in our mission, in our celebrations, or have sought our help. Please continue to pour out your Holy Spirit upon us so that we will always be missionary disciples who are joyful expressions of your Son within our parish and into our community. We boldly proclaim that Jesus is alive in our parish, welcoming the lost and leading us all to new life in him. We ask thee through Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, as one God forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. God, as Mary and Elizabeth embraced your will, let us do the same through your mercy. Hear our petitions. We ask this in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. We want to just remind you that our donation baskets are uh, beside the exit doors on your way out. Thank you for your generous contribution. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. Let us pray to the Lord and to the Lord, for our good and good of all May the Holy Spirit, O Lord, sanctify these gifts laid upon your altar, just as, the, as he filled with his power the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is true, right and just, uh, due to our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the virgin mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with the thrones and the dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we are clay. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna.
Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightfully gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly employ you by the same Spirit, graciously make you holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with the Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, ad ad advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Barry, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Remember your servants, Frank Angelo and Holy Blood, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who were united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, 
give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, that deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from evil, evil, gracious grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the Lord Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and gracious grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your, and spirit. With your spirit. Let us offer to another a sign of Christ's peace. We ask if you're watching us live stream to please put a note in the chat box. Peace, Father. Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the sap of the land. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter into my room, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
conceive and bear a son, and his name will be called Emmanuel. Let us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, Almighty God, that as, as, as the feast day of our salvation draws ever nearer, so we may press forward all the more eagerly to the worthy celebration of the mystery of your son's nativity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for a moment. <clears throat> so this will be the last update on uh, Deacon Miles because he's doing so well. So, um, uh, Yeah, praise God. Uh, I saw him yesterday um, in his home, and, um, and he's recovering fine. His instructions are pretty um, mild. Do what you feel like you can do, and then maybe just do a little bit more the next day and everything else. And so uh, his doctors are happy with the pro progress he's made. Uh, when I talked to him on Monday on the phone, he said he was taking about a thousand steps a day, and he was trying to increase that each day. And so he's figuring out what his tolerances are and everything else. Um, so we're just really excited that uh, in January we certainly hope that he will feel up to getting back and spending time with us. So thank you for your prayers, and he certainly wanted um, me to pass on to you as well to thank you for all the prayers. Uh, big week. Um, if you haven't prepared for Christmas, you better do it now <laughs> because uh, Friday is, is Christmas Eve and so uh, certainly a big time and we'll be welcoming a lot of different people at that particular time. Uh, at this time, I would like to ask if there are any visitors with us this evening. If there are, would you mind letting us know, standing up, uh, letting us know who you are and where you're visiting from. Any visitors with us this evening? I guess all those visitors will be coming on Friday. So <laughs> please stand for a closing blessing. Just a reminder, on Monday at 7 p.m., join me for the Sacrament of Reconciliation. Ten priests will be here. So make this opportunity in your journey of life before you celebrate Christmas. And now I would like to ask you to respond with this uh, prayer, each one with Amen. May the almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of his only begotten Son, and yearn for his coming again, sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's advent and enrich you with his blessing. Amen. Amen. As you run the race of this present life, may he make you firm in faith, joyful in hope, and active in charity. Amen. Amen. So that rejoicing now with devotion at the Redeemer's coming in the flesh, you may be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life when he comes again in majesty. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Our celebration is ended. We go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Watch the night is dim, one more light the bowl shall brim, shining before the frosty weather, bright as sun and moon together. People of peace and sing today, love the star is on the way. On this great feast, him who cometh from the east, set every peak and valley humming with the word, the Lord is coming. People of peace and sing today, 
love the Lord is on.